The French and Indian War. Events in history are connected with each other, and wars are no exception. The origin of the American Revolution came from a war that occurred two decades earlier, the French and Indian War. One of the hottest real estate markets in the 17th and 18th centuries was North America. Fertile soil, cheap or free land, beaver pelts. America had it all. Here's a peek at North America in 1713. Britain claimed the East Coast and most of what's now Canada. France claimed the middle of North America, and Spain claimed the lower areas here. The two world powers, Britain and France, would butt heads periodically. Between 1689 and 1763, Britain and France went to war against each other four times, along with the nations who allied with them. The first three of these wars started in Europe. With the battles between their North American colonies a sideshow. The fourth war, the French and Indian War, was different. The French and Indian War started in America. At stake was dominion for the entire continent. The war lasted from 1754 to 1763, but since fighting in Europe didn't start until 1756, Europeans call it the Seven Years' War. In this corner, weighing in at 225 pounds and sipping a cup of Earl Grey. Britain and its American colonies. The challenger, weighing in at 190 pounds and trying to spread stuff on a baguette that doesn't belong on it. France and its American Indian allies. Spain would join with France later in the war. American Indians actually fought on both sides of the war, but most of them allied themselves with the French, who traded with them and were less threatening than the more powerful Britain. The French and Indian War. Started with a border dispute, both France and Britain's Virginian colonists claimed land in western Pennsylvania and the Upper Ohio River Valley. The governor of Virginia, who felt the French were trespassing on their territory, sent out a young major to tell the French to get, get going. The major's name: George Washington. Ba -ba -ba -ba. When the French refused to leave, Washington was sent back to launch an attack. He won a small skirmish and then got his butt kicked in a larger battle. The news of which prompted the King of Britain to proclaim words that would become immortal in history: "Let's get it on." The war started off poorly for the British and American colonists. In 1756, the war spread to Europe and morphed into a world war. The British and American colonists eventually won and beat the French, and the spoils of war were settled by the Treaty of Paris. In 1763, the Treaty of Paris left France without any territory in North America. Au revoir, Frenchy. France's naval trade was also crippled by the war. The British Empire now ruled supreme in the New World. So it's 1763. Britain scores a huge victory with some help from the colonists. The colonists are proud to be British citizens. It's high fives and biscuits all around. Thirteen years later, they revolt and declare independence against the monarchy. What happened? Part of the answer lies in the after effects of the French and Indian War. One, by eliminating the French in North America, the British had also removed one of the strongest reasons the colonies had for staying loyal to Great Britain: protection from the French. Two, the war made Britain's debt skyrocket. In Britain's eyes, they fought the war for American colonists. So shouldn't the colonists help pay for it and their continuing defense with some new taxes? Three, the British wanted to avoid another costly colonial battle if possible. So, to prevent conflict with the Indian tribes in the area, they restricted colonial expansion to the west. These new taxes and restrictions on expansion, along with the greater imperial control and a feeling that their rights as British citizens were being violated, gradually fed colonial resentment to the point of revolution. 